it's just a thing for me at the moment that I'm comfortable with doing. You know, if you, as a young man, I totally understand your desires are something which are legit. And that not only you, but many young people and even older people obviously have these desires. You see, these are things which seem good to us. But when you break it down logically, rationally, yes, do you think alcohol actually gives you any, any sort of uh, benefit at all? Other than just some temporary enjoyment? No. No. Okay? But it does harm you. Okay? So the harm is greater than the benefit, this temporary benefit, which you seek. Exactly, that's what, that's what my, my thing is, pretty much, like I said, before I get to the point of or even thinking about taking the shahada or, like I said, I listen to my Muslim brothers, I understand what yeah, they're saying yes, to me, yes. also, some of my closest friends are Muslim, yeah, so we have that conversation, yes, yes. I, I gather that, when, you, when you use the word shahada, I gather yeah, that, it's a thing, but it's yes. also for me of, knowing that I do certain things, yes. like I said, I know it's not something that you need to throw away before you become Muslim, but also for me personally, it's something that I want to, reprimand and change for myself personally absolutely yes, that yes. Personally. you know these things which you mentioned are not something that as a muslim that you should not do mm -hmm. people who have come to the understanding of what harm alcohol does to your body mm -hmm. yes what harm it does to your liver and to the rest of the organs mm -hmm. yes what harm smoking does to your lungs and to basically even the people around you mm -hmm. passive smoking you know the reason they are banned smoking in all the restaurants all the indoor places it's for that because the passive smoking they realize is harming the people even if they are not smoking you see so these two things are something they are not benefiting you but they're harming you and the third one you mentioned is sex by the way sex is not wrong as long as within the legitimate border you within the sorry within the scope of legitimacy i.e in a marriage yes because sex is not considered something that is bad but it is a part and parcel of you and your wife and the relationship that you have established in a marriage mm. yes however if you if you're talking about sex in the sense of some people who just go on a one night stand and stuff like that or basically change their girlfriends as if they're changing the clothes the fashion uh, uh, as, as if the seasons change you know this is wrong because what 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 is hap happening here is that in order to satisfy one's desire yes you are somehow abusing the rights of the other people even if that woman or that girl says that this is something that that is consensual sex yes even then yes many people they, they fall pregnant for example and then what happens there's a huge issue there yes because one per one partner wants to take the responsibility oh no i'm going to bring up a child Yes, and uh, the guy says, no, I didn't agree to this. We just had one night or two nights or whatever it is. You see the complexity it creates, yes? Yes, so now, now what happens in this scenario? Who suffers, you know? Sometimes they go for an abortion and it is a baby who, who done no harm, which suffers the most, yes? Because it is that baby whose life was eliminated before it even started, which is a very sad thing because in this country, we have thousands of abortions on a daily basis hundreds of thousands monthly basis and there are loads of teenage pregnancies nowadays it is for this same desire which they which they didn't control because you know how islam sees this yes if you if you have these desires get married do it in a legitimate way where both your wife and you will have a right where your child will have a right yes the the marriage will be blessed in the sense that everyone knows that you're not hiding behind someone's back yes or the girl is not hiding behind somebody's back, her parents' back, or the boy is not hiding and doing things behind the, the parents' back, or the family's back, or the society. You know, these are things which are legitimate, which you enjoy, and which is permissible in Islam. So what uh, what Allah and, the, and His Rasul, the Messenger, has prohibited is bad for you, and it's bad for you as an individual, and bad for you as a family and as a society as a whole. And Islam nips it in the bud: alcohol, drugs, gambling. Yes. All these things are harming not only the individual, but the society at large. Look at the people who gamble, yes? They say, okay, I'm going to use one pound or two pounds, and then they go on to say 10 pounds, yes? So these people, they basically go into debt, and that messes up their life. That messes up the family's life. Now they have to borrow from the parents. They have to borrow from the friends. They mess up the relationship with the parents, the relationship with the friends. You see how it kind of propagates. Even though, yeah, yeah, even though you might be thinking it's going to affect only you, but if you look at it in reality, all of this, even alcohol, take alcohol for example, if somebody is driving and he's drunk, beyond, uh, is beyond the limit of what he is, he's consumed alcohol beyond the limit, the legal limit, 
and he has now crushed into somebody's father or somebody's mother or somebody's child. Yes, that person did not drink. The person who's a victim did not drink alcohol, but it is this person who couldn't control his limit and he drank over the limit and he has now caused harm to this individual who had no idea that this morning or this afternoon he was going to be on the street and he gets knocked down. It has again an impact on his immediate family. He might be the only breadwinner. Yes, he might, she might be a mother to a few children or even one child. That mother, sorry, that child has now lost a mother. The only mother who could care for him, which no other woman can care for him or her. You see what I mean? So what Allah has prohibited, all these things which you say you will miss out by accepting Islam, is something for your benefit and for the benefit of your family and for your society. You see what I mean? So I personally think these are emotional arguments rather than you having have, have, had a look through it or thought through it. You see what I mean? Yes. Um, it's, more, it's more like just looking into it and, and experimenting more, finding out more information about it. Yeah. Again, to that point where I feel like, okay, you know what? I feel like I'm taking the first step in like coming to something like this, yeah. and stuff like that. Absolutely. I feel like I want to look further into it and then yeah. moving forward, I'll know what it is. What, yeah. what, what, but what, what, don't don't let the devil yeah, procrastinate. Okay, so, do not delay too much. I've spoken to him a lot. And yeah. when it comes to these kind of stuff, yeah, he just he wants to stop doing all of these stuff first before he takes a shot. He thinks if he does that and understand, he wants yeah. to start like proper fresh. No, no, you, you, that, you, take it, it, you take it one yeah. step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes? So, for example, if you, if you have a birthday cake, you're not going to eat it all in one gulp, are you? No. You're going to take it piece by piece. So, approach Islam similarly. You do it gradually. And then, you know, the Prophet Muhammad, when the Quran came to him, it didn't come down in one night. Yes, it was revealed on the night of Laylatul Qadr. That means it came, the first ayah came. The first verse or the first few verses of the Quran came. And it took 23 years for the entire Quran to be revealed by Allah. And there is hikmah, there is wisdom behind this. Because Allah wanted it to be piecemeal so that it can be, it can be understood. And then practice rather than all of it be put together and then given, and then everyone has to follow everything in the Quran. Yes, even the alcohol, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because you mentioned alcohol. When alcohol was prohibited during the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah didn't say that it is prohibited from tonight, that's it. Yes, it was prohibited gradually. So initially Allah says the harm that you have in consuming alcohol far exceeds, yeah, the harm far exceeds the benefit. Yes, and gradually this order or this um, uh, this prohibition became more more and more strong in the sense ultimately Allah said it's prohibited completely. <laughs> so you see, it didn't go cold turkey immediately. It, it basically went through stages. Yeah, I'm gonna yes, do, I'm gonna and this is what Islam thing. is all about. Yeah, you you don't have to. You know, another thing which is, reminds me of that there are many Muslims who say that we have to be fully qualified to give dawah or be some sort of an alim to give dawah. Of course, you have to know. You cannot come here and give, give dawah a bit off topic if you don't mind. Yes. If you if you if you know if you know about if you have knowledge to give dawah, the Prophet says even if you learn one ayah, biggie, biggie, you can biggie, wait. Biggie, biggie, small. And, and and this is what it is. Biggie, 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 small. Wow. Leave him, leave him, yes. The guy is drunk. Yeah. So inshallah, I mean you you try your best. Yes, but There's like I said, going on around me for me to be no, no problem, no problem. Like I said, take it, take a step at a time, and do not procrastinate too much, and do not rush into it too much. Take the middle ground, approach it carefully, but then once you have, once your heart and your mind are at peace, and they are telling you that yes, it's now to take another step, then you take another step, inshallah. Learn. The best thing is educate yourself. Yes. Somebody give him a book on the seer of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Inshallah, you guys are his friends. I think Muhammad uh, Tawheed probably has a book on it. You know him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah inshallah. You, if you guys got a book on the seerah, inshallah, he'll read it. The more he, more he keeps in touch with the Muslims, reads about it, inshallah, it'll, be, it'll become easier. Yes, it'll become easier, inshallah. I wish you all the best. Yes, no problem. What's your name again? Oes. Yes. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Not yet, inshallah, he will be. You have a beard in Sunnah, inshallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. You have Sunnah already. Yes, yes. Yours? Any more? <laughs> what is that? What is the English guy?